couple generations ago, space was on a different trajectory. There is a change that's coming. I absolutely think that humans will be on another celestial body, that we will go deep space, and that's exciting. We have the technological capacity to do this, and the moon is in sight, Mars is in sight. These things can happen in our kids and our grandkids' generation, so it's a very exciting time to, uh, to think about how to reprogram society in order to bring the best of us forward as we actually go into the cosmos. Five years ago, we were building satellites in, uh, in, in our garage. It took us a couple of years, but we finally got a satellite into space. My co-founders, I have two other co-founders, Will and Chris, and uh, we met together at uh, the United Nations actually 15 years ago. Now, over the last three years since we've been into space, we've launched 145 satellites, and today we operate the world's largest constellation of imaging satellites. But it was um, getting the end-to-end -end system working really quickly, very crudely, and then learning from that. Our first mission at Planet is to image the whole world every day and to make global change visible, accessible, and actionable, which means we have to have over 100 spacecraft that are autonomously working perfectly in space to act in concert together as a disaggregated sensor network in space to create a line scanner for the planet, to do a global monitoring mission. And then it's really about what you do with that information. And that's when the impact comes. That's when you can actually allow for people to make better decisions. If you take a look at, at the world today, it's constantly dynamic, it's constantly changing, but yet when we go into your favorite maps.something.com, um, it's static. Um, and that's not the way that the world works. Rivers move, uh, fires occur, cities grow, forests shrink, ice caps melt, ecosystems change. And so we are making decisions today, whether you are a firefighter on the line, or you're a farmer, or you are a commodity trader, making decisions based on information that is old. That's what we wanted to do, was to activate the pulse of the planet, right? Actually allow for global change to be visible so that you can see it in context. So you don't have to be an expert in order to actually see change. If we back up for a second and we think about the mission of planet, right? We wanted to image the whole world every day. And then we start to, to say, okay, how do we get at that North Star? Because it's, it's far away, it's off on the horizon. And it, it really allowed for our engineers to think uh, differently around how to build electromechanical systems that can work in, in space. And so the solution that we came up with required there to be quite a bit of difficult engineering challenges, one of which is to build a lot of satellites very quickly. We actually took the best of electrical engineering and mass manufacturing of consumer devices. We brought that into the aerospace uh, component. So if you, if you open up our satellite and you open up a phone or a laptop, it looks very similar. It's that densely compact. We have sensors all over, all over the Earth. Putting all of that information together could allow for us to understand externalities. We, in our global economy, actually don't take into consideration true costs of activities that occur. If we can combine all of this data, near real-time data, in a third-party, verifiable, like scientifically valid approach, we may be able to bring in more things into the value of global companies. And so that's climate change, that's uh, humanitarian effects of certain types of activities. And with this activation of data that's actually happening right now, and uh, a lot of the uh, computer vision, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence of actually mining through these data to come up with new mental models of the world, hopefully that would allow for us to actually transform and evolve our global economy in, in order to be a true cost economy. Even the world's largest and oldest organizations will evolve in order to take on bigger, grander challenges that actually have more intentional, beneficial societal impact. Over the next 10 years or so, commercial players in space will end up uh, dominating a lot of the activity in low Earth orbit to provide truly commercial enterprise services to companies and to citizens and to governments around the world. It would allow for governments to, to be thinking about the next thing, right? What could actually occur further out into space. We can get to that rise to the top where we have the global economy and we actually have the global workplace that are working to create a, a purposive, sustainable, and more desirable future.